Hi, how are you my friends? I hope that uh, you are going to see this live. I know this is rescheduled, but anyway, I am here in the studio and I hope you're going to join me. And we're going to work on quite um, fun and simple project today, which is going to be the altered bottle. So if you can, uh, let your friends know. Hi, Sonika that we are starting now oops oh i'm almost falling off the chair that we are starting now and uh, that we are going to work on the project together i know it's supposed to be sunday hi wendy <laughs> and um, and uh, i had to reschedule that last minute but there were unexpected circumstances happening uh we had vet uh, visit like emergency vet visit with our old dog and unfortunately uh, this was the most important thing at that time and uh, because this is very sad time for, i just think the best thing i can do is to keep myself busy you know how it is hard work and being occupied is the best thing uh, when you are sad so I want this evening to be my distraction and I'm going to create with you and I'm going to think about happy things and we are going to work on something easy, something nice and just general nice idea how you can use the products together. So uh, if you can share the live stream to create with Prima group and Finever and Friends group and we're going to start in about two minutes just to let you know what is the plan. I found this uh, glass bottle um, in the flea market. It was not expensive. It has the nice uh, top matching, which is important. Most of the times you don't get the uh, matching uh, bottles and cups together. And um, this is going to be turned into more, uh, I would say, rustical Scandinavian style. So a lot of white. A bit of grey and silver. This is the plan. It is already with beautiful texture, so we are going to focus mostly on uh, kind of delicate decorating it. And I hope the uh, ideas I'm going to show you, the way you can use the products, are going to be inspiring. So this is a perfect project also if you feel like you are not very experienced with mixed media or home decor, because everything will be easy to follow. So. Um, we are going to use uh, mostly uh, gesso, we are going to use a bit of metal embellishments, but not too much. We are going to use waxes and we are going to focus on the shades of grey and silver. Uh, hello, Lia! Hello, Olga! <laughs> so, um, we are going to use matte waxes for sure. We are going to use um, maybe a little bit of the metallic waxes and uh, maybe a bit of acrylic paints depending how the shading is going to go this is going to be a nice uh, home decor item which is going to be quite minimalistic comparing to some of the things i can do so thank you so much for the support and i want to tell you that those of you who left me the message yesterday uh, sending um, best wishes and uh, words of compassion and you know, I I know um, I should be answering, but honestly, I can't read them yet because otherwise I'm trying not to cry. So uh, this is my plan for today. I will wait until I can read them all. Uh, it's always it's always very sad moment when we lose our uh, friend, our pet, our dog, and or cat or any other f family member that we are attached to. So I'm not there yet. I will read them all. Uh, but now, for the next couple of days, I have to limit the triggers. <laughs> so, again, thank you so much. I'm going to take you to my table now. I can see 84 people watching, which is amazing. Thank you, and this is just great. I will just put the other screen up so I can see you all. Oh, this second phone is always causing a problem yeah it's how you operate with two phones <laughs> so 
let me switch the camera to the top view now. Let me find the right position. Oh. Ah. Almost. Okay, I guess that... That should be it. Thank you so much for joining me and we are going to uh, start this moment. I'm going to use mostly the brushes, but just in case for a little bit of shading, I may use the old sponge as well. So I have it on the side. And the first products we are going to use, it's going to be gesso. We have to start with gesso. I have uh, my... <laughs> Thank you, Ingrid. You are so sweet. Uh, I've got my uh, white gesso because it's going to be Scandinavian style, so a lot of white. And to get better coverage, I can put the second layer of uh, impasto, which is snow white. It's much more saturated than uh, gesso, and there's much more pigment. So if you really want to get something into pure white color, that may be better solution. Of course, I'm not going to paint that part because I would like to be able to close my uh, bottle after, but um, I will try to keep it as clean as possible. We are starting with gesso because the bottle is slippery. So I'm not going to focus on making that super white as I promised. I'm just going to prime it. So my white paint will have easier access to all the spaces on the, mm, on the bottle, especially it is really with the nice cut. That is um, not crystal. <laughs> Uh, but the cut is kind of an uh, attempt uh, to get the imitation of crystal. That's why we have all these nice textures here. So I'm going to put it on the side for drying. And then I will work on painting uh, the bottle. So in, when you're planning to do some kind of alteration and you want to uh, work on the slippery surface, first of all, you have to prepare it. It's good to wash it and hopefully to remove all the possible greasy oil residues. And the second step is putting a coat of primer. If you like the natural color, you can use clear gesso. We're going for the white background anyway, so white gesso is a good start. And of course, it's uh, important to dry it completely before we are going to uh, continue painting because we have to give this gesso a good chance to stick. Um, of course, gesso is naturally sticky. It's naturally the product that is made to stay on the um, not very friendly surfaces. But if it's going to be wet, and we will start painting too early, it may just came, simply come off. So give it a good uh, chance to dry. This is what we are going to do. And when it's going to dry, I will do something else in the meantime. Yeah, I just, I want to make nicely decorated bottle and I don't want to cover all that beautiful textures we have with embellishments. I'll just do one, maybe two groups of embellishments maximum, but I want to help this bottle naturally shine with this natural beauty and uh, to see what we can do, how to help this uh, object to get this uh, lovely dimensional look. That's why I'm going to focus mostly on using uh, waxes and just a little bit of paint. And we're not going to make too big um, groups of embellishments because I would like to see most of that texture. It is really nice. So we don't really have to cover that too much. Of course, I wouldn't be myself if I wouldn't put a cluster of embellishments or something. So uh, this is one of the hacks <laughs> if you want to paint a bottle and you don't know how to hold it in your hands, I would say try to use a stick. And then of course we will dry it with the heat gun. Thank you, Caroline. I'm happy that you are here as well. Ah! Look at that, it's trying to 
get away from me. <laughs> okay, we have one quite thin coat of gesso, which is going to be good start. And of course, remember all the imperfections that will show, it is not a big deal because we are going to paint it several times. So if something is not going according to the plan, it's still okay. So I maybe start from here so I can put it down. That will be smart. <laughs> This bottle was probably like three euro on the free market and <laughs> uh, I just bought it because I needed something for my home uh, decoration. I just wanted to have some kind of um, bottle for the flowers or maybe I will use it during the serving some special Christmas dinner. But um, later on I bought some nicer ones. Uh, I bought some real crystal as well. So this one was um, was planned to be used for uh, uh, decoration. So now I'm going to turn it just into still usable but more art object than something that you would use uh, often for serving the food. So it's, you know, it's not the uh, Miss Universe when it comes to the bottles, but it's going to look really nice. I prepared some of the embellishments. I've got uh, some glitter as well, and I've got some nice charms I want to put on the top of the bottle as well. So let's see. Okay, not bad. So I'm giving it a nice chance to dry. And in the meantime, of course, don't forget the top. I will use the heat gun to dry it as well. When you want to keep maximum of your textures visible, maybe you have beautiful stencing, stencil design, or maybe you created some uh, lovely skins uh, with uh, some products and folders and you are sticking that on the top and you're afraid that painting gesso is going to kill it, it's going to be hidden, it's much easier to get good results if you're going to put two or three very thin layers instead of putting one thick layer and um, then struggling to see the design. So, you can see now I'm able to uh, touch it easily. Of course, it is not perfect yet, but this is just like the priming stage. I'm going to use white impasto, which is also very, very matte finish. It's almost like um, gesso, but much more white than gesso is. So it's going to cover um, a bit better. So now we have prepared surface. It's much easier to paint on the mat. And we are going to start um, with the acrylic paint. I just need to check the consistency Ah, maybe a little bit more water to make it more flowy. You know, you have to feel what is good for you. What is good about acrylic paints and application, it's easy to water them down so you can make them thinner. That's why when you have thicker paint, it's not a big deal. You can quite easily uh, change the consistency, adding water or the... Uh, fluid medium or the liquid uh, gel medium, you can still do that and um, you make the consistency which is going to work for you. So now I'm again brushing white color on the top. You can see this time it covers much more. I don't have to go deeply, deeply in the cracks because this is the place where I'm going to rub my wax in. Anyway, so the wax is going to uh, create this deeper shadows effect. Anyway, so, you know, if I had to, I would just dab it like this. See, this is quite easy way, but I don't have to. I'm going to focus on uh, just brushing the white. Oh, I forgot the bottom, huh, of course. What is the bottle called? Hmm. Uh, in 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 Polish, this is karafka, which is like the carafe, I think. Uh, it's the bottle which is supposed, or the canter. Uh, this is the bottle which is often used to serve alcohol. So you take your 
sophisticated alcohol out of the original bottle, for example, whiskey or wine or whatever you are serving, and then you put it into this bottle and you serve it in a nice way. Um, the canting process, I, as I heard, it is helping the alcohol to breathe. This is especially important when you have certain kinds of wine. So you can call it the canter. And this, this is uh, probably the official name. In the, we use it for <laughs> different kind of purposes. It's just a pretty bottle, but officially, uh, when you are looking at these ones, I would looking at the canters. Hello, hello, I'm glad to see you all. Look, just with the white, uh, already the texture looks so uh, nice and uh, so interesting. So it will be kind of shame really to not to use it. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Like maybe this is not the most sophisticated bottle. This is not real crystal cut, but it can uh, give us wonderful texture to work on. If um, you want to decorate quite plain bottle, then you can work first with some kind of texture. So you can look for solutions with um, sticky stencils. Uh, Prima has some uh, kind of fun solution, which is like a sticker and stencil in one. So you can go around the bottle and then it's going to be self-adhesive and you can apply your paste and then peel it off easily. So that would be kind of good idea, I think. I will just dry the top so I can hold it better now. But if not, you can just create some freehand textures as well. This is another advantage of the impasto paint. It dries quickly. It's very similar when it comes to drying to gesso. Thank you, Ingrid. Yes, she is absolutely right. This is the counter. And you can, you can find these in various shapes and sizes. Some of them are square, some of them are round and oval. And this is cheap version, which means it's just a regular glass. And of course, you can find them in sophisticated, beautiful crystal. And uh, that would be the one that I would not paint because uh, it's it's beautiful as it is the crystal um, is uh, treated this way that um, it has beautiful light reflections on the top and this way um, if you put it in the nice light you can easily enjoy beautiful look and then the liquid inside is going to have amazing shade as well so if you want to do it, pick the uh, cheaper one, okay? Pick the, uh, the one that I have, just regular glass in the nice shape. Don't go for the crystal ones because killing them with the paint uh, would be probably a waste, while the effect after painting is going to be basically the same. I have some real glass, sorry, real uh, crystal decanters as well at home. And uh, I have also matching glasses and I would not dare painting them. I know how much they, <laughs> they cost as well. This kind of um, fancy glass, uh, it was quite popular in Poland in the 80s and in the 70s. So <laughs> at home, my, my grandma had quite a good collection of the uh, crystal um, va vases and um, crystal plates, crystal everything, glass. <laughs> we were never supposed to use it though. It was just for decoration and not looking. <laughs> okay, that should be enough for now. We can, we can always add wax on the top as well. So let me dry it. So we can play on the embellishments and if we will need some extra white later, we can add. Not bad start, I think. I just missed a spot here, which is kind of annoying. 
uh, painting glass, it has to be definitely done on the top of the primer, on the top of the gesso. Otherwise, it is never going to stick. And getting full coverage may be a bit of pain. But no worries, we're going for a rustical style. And that means um, that is going to give us some space for imperfection. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Yes, that's true, for Christmas. The counters are perfect for Christmas, especially we are serving some uh, special drinks for all that time. And, uh, well, see? Oh, no, 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 you have to. Now, <laughs> uh, we have a chance to put some pretty dishes on the table and uh, we can just work a little bit more on the home decor. Now, too much, of course, I have to color the um, the top as well so it's going to yes <laughs> Ingrid has all the knowledge we know we need to know uh, yes carafina that's beautiful <laughs> and German carafina yes we use carafka so that is the word for the counter and um, I always have an excuse where our guests are coming I'm able to use these a little bit or for Christmas. It just makes life a little bit more glamorous and um, a little bit um, more entertaining as well. So I'm going to try to prepare some embellishments that I'm going to put on the top of that. So my paint will have the time to dry before I will start painting more and adding uh, waxes, okay? Not bad, look, the coverage coming from the uh, impasto paints, it's, it's much better than from gesso, but I don't think it is a um, good idea to start with the impasto. It's just uh, good enough to put one coat of the gesso for priming and then adding the color on the top. Again, quick drying. Yes, they are great gifts, exactly. Okay, Ingrid is multitasking. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ah, oh, what's one spot here? Now it would be the best if I can put it into something for better drying. Let's put it into embellishments you can't see it but it's standing in the right position so now we can close just so for that moment we can put the brush in the water and now our paint is drying and breathing a little bit we can think about kind of combination of the uh, embellishments we're going to put on before uh, extra paint and i will show you what i prepared I have selection of different um, elements here. I wanted to put some charms and I even started collecting things uh, on the top of the bottle. So it's going to be hanging here and I prepared some nice natural string. I have some chiffon ribbon. I have some glitters, but this is for finishing touches and also some micro beads also for finishing touches. These are going to be used later. I prepared charcoal black and old white matte waxes, but in case if I will change my mind, I also have white pearl, the new wax coming uh, to your shops now, brushed iron, which is metallic dark, hmm, almost like lead color and old silver, which is silver. So we are all going to stay into gray, silver, white um, combination of the colors. And we've got a um, selection of different elements to create a composition. I was planning to put one of the flowers and then surround it with some other elements, including maybe a bit of leaves to keep a maximum maximum of that beautiful texture visible with this 
one uh, nice composition uh, placed in the middle because it will be really a shame to kill it all so now i can uh, make some planning the leaves they come from the uh, woodland leaf set and this is going to be good uh, match for the flowers to create the result i'm not sure maybe i will do more mechanical flower i've got heavy body gel to glue it together and i have hot glue to attach it temporary to my bottle as well so it's going to be like in two steps um, hot glue will never hold it enough but heavy body gel will so i'm going to use a bit of the glue to temporarily put it in the right place and then secure it with the heavy body gel this is like a trick you can use when you have to work quicker and you would like to be able to move your object a little bit around i was also thinking uh, maybe I'm able to uh, add one of these um, um, <laughs> labels. Yes, it's even on one of these labels on the top of the bottle. And this is, uh, <laughs> yes, basket challenge, <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is an option, of course, but I would have to bend it. Uh, they are nice ones. Uh, art is the answer. Uh, find yourself. Maybe find yourself in a bottle is not a good thing. Your story matters and be in the moment. And that would be really nice because be in the moment. It's like, okay, enjoy this moment with your friends. Really focus on what you would like to do. So I can even think about combining that with this strap here. So these are my ideas so let's create the plan for the focal point first um, maybe I will put it on the mat so you can see better or even on the paper towel because my table is very dirty <sighs> so uh, when it comes to gluing um, heavy metal elements then my first choice is the heavy body gel <laughs> in good drink me you will find yourself <laughs> exactly and this is going to be the solution that is going to hold the things in place so i have a choice between this flower and this flower this is going to be more romantic and this is going to be more steampunk and i think i'm going to go for more uh, steampunk style and i also have some smaller ones and I have this one, which is going to be uh, one of the charms. So let's let's prime it with gesso first. I know I rarely do it, but um, today, because I want to minimize touching the bottle when it is drying. Pfft, sorry, gesso. Huh. I should not drink anything from this bottle. <laughs> I will just prime it with gesso so it would be easier for me to repaint it later so it will have better chances to stick okay i'm just adding one coat dry it and glue it together and inside of this i'm going to put this lotus flower which i'm also painting <laughs> yeah it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, it is going to be covered with waxes and silver. I just want to give the maximum chances to the bottle to dry properly without touching it too much. I'm sure you understand. Um, be in the moment. Let's be in the moment. For now. And this is going to be my charm. It's not a problem to wax it later when it is uh, gessoed. So I'm just going to give it one quick coat. And very likely I will paint one set of leaves. Because I will need it for sure. And we'll see what happens later. I can always 
add more maybe uh, lotus yeah lotus will be useful as well so in general the idea is to keep it white with the shadows and then add a little bit of bling uh, to make it special i would like to cover my flower with a new kind of paste this is the one that i was showing you during the live stream um last thursday and that is crystal uh, sorry crushed crystal effect but to do that of course we have to put it in the right place it's going to give it this glazy look to the whole project let's dry that part so we can glue it together and then we are going to assemble the focal point on the composition my bottle is still having a chance to dry <laughs> This is just a primer. You can see I'm not making that super white. I will paint it anyway on the top of the bottle just to help it a little bit. just so it's drying quickly I missed a spot as always so how are you keeping guys how are things for you in the meantime I can read the comments and I can see what was going on Yeah, you like the shape of the bottle? Yeah, I liked it as well. And it was not expensive bottle at all. But now because of that cut um, and because of the shape, it's going to make really pretty home decor. And of course, um, it wasn't so impressive when it was just, just transparent glass. But now we're going to add more of the interest to it. So let's talk about the compositions. I'm not I don't really have space for it here but if I had um, a completely plain bottle one of the ideas could be using um, sophisticated embroidery or lace and gluing that as one of the first layers and that is going to create really beautiful effect as well just to show you how it can be done I will remind you one of the projects I did We're going for similar effect today, so this is good reference for you. Look, right? You remember this one, maybe. Uh, if not, there is video on my YouTube channel where I'm showing that. This was the teapot, and then, of course, it was uh, completely flat and plain. But using the lace pieces, you can create a lovely texture on the top. So if we were missing that on the bottle, we could easily use um, ideas such as lace or um, even some <laughs> um, easy to bend mold elements to uh, decorate the background. So this is kind of the look we are going to create today. I hope you're going to like it. And um, of course, you can see we are going to create this gray shadows. And this teapot, if you'd like to see it, please go to my YouTube channel, which is uh, Finavar Studio, and you are going to see it. If you scroll down the videos, there is a full tutorial how I've done this one. So now, similar concept, uh, but we need to start with something. Uh, I will start with gluing the elements down, and then we're going to work on the color and then on the bling and the finishing touch so let's find the spot where to put our composition let's say this is somewhere here i hope you can see what i'm doing i have far too much stuff on the table i will put the glitters on the side oh that is going to be 
the plan. I'm trying to find the middle. You can see there is a kind of a line on two sides. So I guess the middle is here. And here we're going to work on creating the uh, flower first and then adding some embellishments around it. Not too much. Remember the the most important part is the natural beauty of the bottle. So to start, I'm just going to hold it in place for a moment uh, with the hot glue. So it's easier for me to work on the other elements. Remember, this is just temporary solution. So you will have to secure it with the heavy body gel after that. And I will show you how I did it. Okay, so this is starting point. Now we can look at um, our elements we would like to use and create a cluster of embellishments next to it. So I have the idea to add the leaves. Yes, leaves will be lovely and they give us the chance to bend them as well, which is very important. And for better measure, we can cut it and put second, second part of leaves, like the second bunch of leaves on the other side for the balance. So stay there, my dear bottle. So I'm just adding a little bit more of the white again. And then we're going to keep it in place. Sometimes really uh, the easy solutions are the best ones. You don't have to agonize over every detail. Sometimes it's just good to find things that match and go with the idea that you have. Use the advantage of um, elements you already have on your project, right? So you don't have to change everything. You can, but sometimes it's just good to use the natural beauty of the object. So this is what we are going to do today. We're going to use the natural beauty of the object. Of course, when you're using your glue, you have to be very careful and don't push anything with your finger because you will be sorry later. <laughs> like I was sorry many times before. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to add a bit Hmm. Yeah, a little bit like this, so I have more space. I'm trying to bend it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'm trying to bend it. So it's going to match the shape of the bottle. And that means I have to move these leaves a little bit. Or... Put them a, li oh, a little bit more down. See? Be in the moment. Of course, you can use tools. But on the other hand, if you are like me, you will be able to bend it quite easily. Okay. When you're gluing with the heavy body gel, there will be some visible parts of gel after pressing that down. So the easiest way to work with that is to brush it off and make sure it is going to stay in place, right? It's better to put more gel and brush off the excess than to be very, very clean with your uh, composition. Again, putting the leaves into 
the composition in a little bit different place. So now we have the body of the composition. Now we have to look for the smaller bits and pieces to fill it up nicely. Before I'm going to add elements here, now I told you about securing the composition with the heavy body gel. I'm going to take this big lumps of gel and go inside here and put it around my hot glue. So even if one day it will try to chip off, something is going to stop it and the gel is going to be there to hold it in place. Of course, other elements around, which we're going to add now, they are going to keep it safe as well. But security is the most important because heavy uh, body gel is flexible and very strong after drying, while a hot glue is going to only work for a short period of time and it works really with the lightweight matte uh, objects. And the glass and metal is neither light or matte, so it is not going to be a good solution. So I hope you can see what I'm trying to do. It's just like painting with the heavy body gel around my composition and it's going to hold it much, much better before I'm going to add the next um, group of embellishments. If you want to work quickly on the 3D object, this is a very convenient solution because this way uh, you can keep the elements in the right position when you are gluing the other ones and uh, quite easily you can uh, build the composition without stopping all the time and drying and uh, adding more and drying. This way you can just speed up your work and make it a little bit uh, more efficient and less frustrating. Uh, this is uh, not a hair dryer, this is heat gun for embossing, but you can use your hair dryer with a great result. Hair dryer will do the same thing, it's just a little bit stronger blow and not as hot. So, um, drying time may be a little bit different, but it's exactly the same idea. Now, uh -huh. we have the body of it more or less in place. Now we have to fill it with the other embellishments, other uh, flowers, mechanicals. We try to keep it close to the center uh, because, as I said before, we want to see the natural beauty of the bottle. So when we turn it around, we will see the... Um, the cut, the shape of the bottle. So now I'm just switching to the heavy body gel and the, with the big, big lumps of gel, I'm going to add other embellishments around. And I'm just picking up the excess with my brush. Uh, here, really, more is better. I'm just to take this gesso so we don't have to worry too much. So I have a flower here, so maybe for good measure, we will try to put a smaller flower on the other side as well. I will just paint it a little bit. Oh, a little bit, right? Come on. This mini lotus flower. <laughs> Hi guys, oh, I can see more people coming. Thank you so much for watching. I was really worried that on Tuesday nobody will be here and look at you. Thank you so much. So this will go here. Now we can give it a stay a little bit more of the steampunk company oh 
for example, something like this. This is too similar, maybe a little cog. Yeah, that is nice. I'm going to stick it right away. Look, big lump of gel and slide it as close to the composition as possible. And again, I maybe will take a smaller brush this time. I dip it in the water and I try to brush off the excess. It's kind of important moment when you are going to dry this composition that all the elements are going to stay in place. Like you want them to um, to be safely, thank you, to be safely secured and you know glued in the right place. And now I'm just trying to see if I can find a spot for this one, but I think hmm, here. Maybe here. I will try to sh change the shape of it a little bit. Okay. You have to find a way to make it work, right? If it doesn't want to work, you make it work. <laughs> so it's better to have more than not enough in this situation. Again, trying to push it around so it's going to secure the elements in the right position. Maybe something small here. We're almost done with it. We don't really have too much space left. Oh, that will be really pretty. Stay. Oh, I can see you're helping me. Yes, if, if I don't answer because I'm so focused on painting or gluing, just repeat the question until somebody's going to answer or I will see it, okay? Please, please be kind because uh, sometimes I'm not able to look at the screen because I'm looking at the project and I am a bit too uh, focused on that. I'm not sure if this is secured, not yet. I will do more. But I guess there was a question about uh, gluing with the heavy body gel. It is very, very sticky, very thick gel medium. If you look at the consistency, you probably will see that it is quite similar to creme brulee, maybe. Oh, that will be perfect touch. Come on. <laughs> very, very small um, knob I can put in here. It's going to fit. And now we can look for the tiny finishing touches, such as screw heads or maybe some pebbles. So I can uh, pretend these elements are really screwed uh, down they are attached to the bottle with the screw and I can do the same trick here with the um, the text on the bottle so um, screw heads or small pebbles um, this is nice for the centers I have some of the screw heads. These come from the small uh, sets of embellishments I made from for Prima. They are used hard, mini hardware and hardware accents. And uh, there are various shapes and sizes of the screws inside there. And uh, you can easily find something that is going to work. So I think I'm going to go with the two little screw heads for the text and then inside of the flowers or on the cogs I can use these kind of knobs. Or maybe I'm even able to find a bigger knob. I have the 
a lot of these <laughs> because I keep using them for different kits and when I have leftovers I always throw them inside of the jars like that also I have some pebbles of different sizes so I can use that for the same purpose and now using the same glue I'm going to use the heavy body gel in here right so this is going to hold my unique label in place pretending we screwed it down to the bottle <laughs> hello debbie welcome to my world of creativity i'm very happy that you found me see no bad at all not bad at all now something inside of the the lotus there's a big lump of the glue which is not there anymore now we're going to put this quite nice bolt then we have these ones so let's try to put something nice in there so it's going to get extra texture i'm looking at the pebbles of different sizes there's really cute pebble here i can add next to it for extra texture oh hello we have people from australia as well <laughs> it's great how we can all see each other in the internet it will be impossible to do so in real life to have the meeting of us all in one place but look here we are we are just able to virtually uh, see each other in places like online groups or um message boards it's it's absolutely wonderful i think let's find other way of gluing this flower oh that should work better well that's the nature sometimes you have to help with the shapes Yeah, that seems to be better solution. Now, this one is missing something inside. Maybe a pebble. I'm happy you like it. Really, this is something that um, you will be able to do with uh, just a bit of the found objects and not so long a list of the products so so far we are using white uh, gesso and white uh, impasto acrylic paint and um, now heavy body gel to make the composition here of course your imagination is the limit you have to find things that are going to call your name and uh, hopefully uh, different shapes and sizes which are going to create the composition so it's good to have variation of shapes and sizes like we have um elements which are bigger and smaller and more flat and less flat and so on so this way uh, we can uh, create cluster and it's going to be quite secured and it's going to stay in place okay so let's look at um the sides if i don't see any really ugly lumps of glue but i don't think so now we have to dry it completely okay this is important because if we're going to start painting it and the elements are moving it is frustrating because you have to take step back and then glue it again um, of course you can repeat similar composition on the other side 
but that means uh, you would have to wait with the whole uh, process, right? You would have to dry it first and then hopefully put it on something fluffy, which is going to hold it in place and then work on the other side. So it's going to be like one level uh, up when it comes to difficulty of the project. Uh, it's absolutely doable. It's just more waiting time. So I will just try to make the patches in the places that uh, didn't work too well. And now with the heat gun or with the hair dryer, uh, we are going to dry our composition so everything stays in place and I can paint it with uh, my gesso or my acrylic paint. Please remember uh, heavy body gel is gel medium. This is the one that we were using for gluing. Oh, hello to Egypt <laughs> and Greece. Wow, very international group here today. Uh, so this is uh, the product that I made for Prima to uh, create dimensional collage projects to help myself with gluing techniques like that one. And you can absolutely dry it with the heat gun if you want, uh, or if you prefer, you can uh, let it dry naturally. But with the heat gun or hair dryer, it works really well. So now, trying not to overheat it, I will just dry from different angles. So my gel, even in the bottom layers, it may dry. Yes, uh, the labels are changing constantly, but there was supposed to be color on it as well, uh, the navy blue, but it's coming in the next label, I hope. So we are going for this rustical style. And let me show you again what kind of style I, I, I'm referring to because I know not all of you were able to see. This is one of the projects I made for you before. So this is a similar kind of colorist, uh, color combo we are going to go for. Mm, not just uh, maybe we'll see how rusty we're going to go I want it to be a little bit more shiny like you know Scandinavian Christmas with a lot of silver so we're going to see what happens sometimes I have a plan and then I change my mind halfway it also is quite possible yes Estonia and Norway so it's lovely to see you all and Scotland lovely so the trick is to get there closer to the gel right so this is going to help us keep it in place and of course it's hard to say if it's dry or not so from time to time I'm going to check with my fingers and remember that this is going to be very hot and also that means the gel is going to be moving a little bit just because it's hot. So keep it in mind, okay? So let it cool down and we'll see what happens. Oh, micro beads opened. My life is one big misery. <laughs> just a moment. I have micro bead explosion here. I think they're really eager to go on the project today. Sorry, micro bit explosion. Now, this is a little bit moving. Uh, yeah, it's moving a bit, yeah. So maybe like one or two more minutes. This is still a little bit moving, so I know I can do a bit more. Um, the pieces from Prima. Looking at my bottle, everything I have on the bottle is Prima, yeah, except the bottle. And all the art mediums are Prima as well. These are mechanicals uh, from Finever collection. I made for Prima. I can just show you one of the packages so you will be able to refer to the project.
Yes, the metal embellishments come like this. This is um, set with the leaves. I was using some of the leaves here as well, but they are different sets of different embellishments. Some of them are um, more mechanical, some of them are more like flowers and so on and so on, just according to your personal taste. I designed these to match my personal uh, preferences. So there will be some sets um, that will be more soft and uh, let's say romantic. And there will be sets which are very steampunk like, very much like grungy. So there is something nice for everybody. Uh, okay, now. Sandy, thank you so much for posting the link to that YouTube video. I highly recommend. And um, I'm, not, I'm going to now carefully check. Remember, this is super hot. So before we are going to paint it, we are going to put a bit more of this white color on the top. Uh, there are just few of the items which are not painted with gesso, they're going to take the uh, impasto paint with, without any problem. If you don't have gesso, you can paint impasto directly on the metal because it's very sticky and very thick, heavy body acrylic paint. So I'm just um, checking the consistency. So this is going to be easy to paint. And then I'm going to add one layer on the top of my embellishment so it will be easier to repaint to the color that I have on my mind. Of course, carefully, if you will find element that maybe it's still moving, you can give it again a bit of drying. In fact, the best thing you can do is to leave it to dry naturally and um, stop the whole process for half an hour, leave it in a dry, warm place, and then continue. But the reality is, when we are doing live stream, we have to speed the things up. So I sometimes have to take the risk, and I'm doing that now. Of course, it is quite secure already. You can see I'm painting and nothing is coming off, but for extra security, it will be just easier to let it dry and it dries to super solid, super, super solid. So you don't have to worry that later you are uh, taking your brush and going in all that details and oh, oh my God, right? You can see how white impasto is. It's really, really covering white paint. So very quickly, our composition is turning into something um, very, um, nicely uh, snow white. Um, my hands are sticky, I'm sticking to the bottle. Uh, this is one of the examples how sticky heavy body gel is. <laughs> and now we can apply our colors on the top the way we want it. My plan was to use uh, mostly the waxes. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to um, use brush and also the baby wipe to remove the excess. Uh, the main color I want to, to use is the charcoal black, which is matte uh, dark gray color. It's going to create this shadow effect. And then we're going to work on the highlights and adding some blink to it uh, with the whites, of course. So it's first we're going to make it darker, then to make it more fancy. <laughs> this is the plan. I close the heavy body gel for now. If you have any questions, um, I'm going to answer, of course. And I will try to clean my hands a little bit with baby wipes. Also close the gesso for now. Yes, as Monica said, if you can, it's great that you can create the composition and then dry it overnight so you don't have to spend the time with the heat gun and uh, maybe worry that maybe some part is still loose. Uh, it's always a challenge when you are teaching a class, like I do the classes, people want to see the whole process done in a few hours only. 
and um, that's why the heat gun is a solution and that's why the art mediums I made they're designed to work really well with the heat gun but um, the best the safest way is to let it dry naturally and then continue the next day uh, I didn't paint it with gesso now that now the last layer was impasto snow white paint which is very thick uh, matte heavy body acrylic uh, but the first layer I started with white gesso because I wanted to prime the bottle and I wanted to prime the bigger elements of my composition as well to make the whole process easier. Okay, I'm almost almost clean. Remember, the imperfections are part of the style here. In the rustical style, uh, objects look like they are worn out and old, so you don't have to make the whole painting super perfect, right? This is one of the nice things. Uh, if you are um, not a huge fan of the perfection, this is going to be something for you. Now, I will take the palette, clean one. <laughs> Oh, Sandy Africa is beautiful. <laughs> it's one of the countries that, uh, well, countries, I'm talking about South Africa now. Uh, South Africa is one of the countries you should see if you can. And generally Africa, I believe, is a beautiful continent. So there are so many different cultures and so many beautiful places. Okay, look at the color of that um, uh, wax. This is matte wax, charcoal black. It is very, very dark gray. So it's going to do a great job for us to make all these shadows. And to clean off the excess, we can use, for example, the baby wipe. And um, we want most of this wax to go into the bottom layers. And then we can regulate how dark it is going to be how far we can go, and so on. So, you know, this is something uh, which is personal choice. Some people prefer cleaner, some people prefer a lighter. I'm just going to show you what kind of so, uh, look we can get. And um, this is, you can see this gray color here. This is the one that I'm going to apply now. So, first of all, I would like to find the brush which is going to work the, the best for me. Um, I will try with this one first. This is one of my uh, dabbing brushes, which are quite good for uh, waxes. Also, they're good with stencils. And I'm trying to rub the wax inside of the brush, so this is not going to be like one big lump. It's more on the bristle. And now, I want to rub it inside to create the shadow. And then, with the baby wipe to remove the excess from the top. You see what I mean? It's going to clean off nicely. If it's coming off too much, no worries. We can always paint a little bit dry brush on the top. This is so easy. So nice. I'm going quickly with the big um, parts of that first. So I want the wax to go into the deeper parts of the composition. And then I'm going to work around the um, smaller embellishments here. So again, trying to get in and now taking off the excess.
quickly. Now, it's easier to move the smaller brush. So I'm going to go for the small, small brush to go deeper in the composition. This is very old brush, so there will be no problem to get into those spaces. And again, if it's too much somewhere, we take it off. Creating shadows. on the bottom layers. If it's too much, you don't worry. We can always put the white on the top in the next step. And now, to create a bit of this darker look on the bottom as well. And again, trying to rub off the excess It's already turning really, really nice. <laughs> yeah, it should be like um, ASMR for uh, crafters. Oh, that's too much. Nice. Remember when you're using the wax, the wax is also uh, um, at the same time like a finishing product. It's creating a protective coat. So you can get really nice results just by um, adding the wax. It's going to be protected. So it's one of the great ways of finishing your product. Now, we made it dark, now we need to make it lighter. So we have better contrast. Cleaning the fingers first. <sighs> so I don't have to... Yeah, it is, it is turning shabby, of course. I'm trying to clean off the excess in the places that I have to. There are some places I need to repaint, but this is not a big deal because now we are going to do a bit of dry brushing of the same acrylic paint. Dry brushing is the technique when you have just a bit of it on your brush. So I'm just touching the tops to make the contrast more dramatic. I'm using the same acrylic paint, Snow White from our impasto paints. I'm just cleaning it off a little bit. And of course, things like that are going to happen, especially when you are in a hurry. So you can just mask it now. Now we can think what kind of color we would like to add here to the composition because uh, keeping that only white and gray is of course one of the solutions but 
we can go with a little bit more of the sophistication and add maybe a bit of the rusty color as well or a little bit of brown which is going very nicely with the rustical colors and i plan to add a bit of the brown string as well so we can think about that solution This is just a little bit for now because uh, we're going to do the final touches with the wax, white wax, it's just to clean it off. So I'm going to dry it. And I'm thinking about the color. Yes, of course, uh, Monica, this is one of the ideas I have for the future so now we can do it a little little bit more fun with um, uh, tiny touches of the other colors for example ochre and burnt sienna just here on the um, embellishments these are liquid acrylics which are transparent uh, acrylic paints and they are very concentrated so with a small amount i can create a lot and it's going to create the look um, that i really like oh come on I'm trying to take just a bit and it doesn't want to cooperate. Taking a small brush again. It's kind of amazing how many brushes I use during one process. Just a bit and then a water to let it float. So it's almost like putting a bit of a stain. So this is going to break the whole color into a little bit different color palette. Okay, as you can see with a small brush, you can get really a lot of result come on cooperate too much here <laughs> come on yeah that's better let's dry it So the first color we applied on the white, it was charcoal black matte wax, this one. And then we've got uh, a bit of the contrast coming from the liquid acrylics. It's just to create like a stain, like wood stain on the um, embellishments. Stay here. I would need a third hand, but it never happens. Like I don't have extra one, although it will be so helpful. As you can see, I'm just trying to create the effect like these are maybe made of metal because they are and that part is going to be having a little bit of the touch of the extra color
So I'm drawing from different angles again to get to the places. Where are you going? To the places that um, may be still wet. You can see how nicely dimensional that uh, effect we got in here. Mm -hmm. And now, before we are going to add special touches, we can take same product but in white. This is uh, old white uh, matte wax and then add a bit of the highlights in the places that we need. But now I think I'm going to mostly use my finger. So this is the sister product to the black one that we used already. Now we can highlight the parts that we maybe lost a bit. It's um, also the wax, uh, but this time it's going to be white matte finish. So this way we can highlight parts of our composition that may be lost. What I'm, ended, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm trying to hold it in the right position, but I'm not always too successful. Sometimes it's hard to get with your finger to some parts of um, the cluster of embellishments. So then I will look for the smaller uh, brush as well. I'm also adding the highlights in that part of the bottle, which I think it's too gray. This is um, something for people who love um, waxes and they would like to add some matte finish to the project. So we created matte version of the wax and it is white at the same time. So the same way of applying as the waxes, but um, a bit different result, how beautiful it is. Yeah, so now I'm going to do similar thing in the other parts of the bottle. In fact, it's just easier probably this way. <laughs> I have everything on my hand. And then wherever you feel you would like to have some extras. Of course, now it's the time when you're doing these finishing touches. It's just a matter of what you want to, to get and how far you want to go. Some people will be done quite quickly and they'll say, oh, this is enough and I'm happy. Some people will be brushing and brushing and brushing and they will be like, oh no, I want more, I want more. So you have to decide for yourself when is the right time to stop. Let's say for me, this should be enough now. I let it dry a little bit and then um, I can uh, work on some charms that we can attach here to the, um, to the bottle as well. So I have this little pocket watch and I think I'm going to use a bit of the silver wax, old silver wax to add color to it because I would like to add some glittery silver to the f final layer of it as well, because silver goes so well with the rustical style. I'm just taking, oh, I didn't even open that. <laughs> I'm thinking why it is not coming out? Why? Maybe because it is closed. Yeah, so you can see silver is completely different color to a white. I'm going to wax my clock. 
so it's going to look beautifully on this bottle this is one thing I have this really cute bead bead come on bead <laughs> and I have crystal charm I had well I had a crystal charm but here is one of my sugar pebbles I'm going to stick inside of that uh, pocket watch with the heavy body gel this is drying now so I can uh, oh yes crystal charm Ta -da! I think this is going to be a very nice combination of the elements for the decoration of the bottle almost there and I have this chiffon uh, chiffon uh, ribbon to decorate the top and I, I have a big spool of the white and silver twine anyway so let's touch it yes that should be fine not bad at all so one of the things i wanted to do i wanted to create the feeling it's really winter it's more scandinavian style so uh, what i remember from that using white and silver and browns and grays is really a thing uh at least it was a couple of years ago now it's probably turning into something else so for me i wanted to add a bit of a um, crushed ice effect paste this is the one that is new and it has crystals inside and also a bit of the silver glitter it's going to create the look almost like it is um hmm, like a glaze on the top so on the top of my embellishments it's going to create a really lovely look so let's push it in some parts to create this frosty wonderland effect just look the base of this product is gel and this gel is completely transparent after drying so it's going to create this glossy and crystal look at the same time and one of the advantages of course it is drying quite fast as well so we can um, work on the details quite quickly it's not super fast drying but it does the job nicely so i'm trying to give it a bit of that super glazy finish and if you feel like it and i i do we can also sprinkle some of the extra glitter and this extra glitter i would say silver or transparent is going to make it even more festive and more winter inspired this is of course permanent effect what I'm applying now and if you feel like adding a bit of the frost on the bottle as well you can look it's going to make really pretty touch course if it's too much when it's wet you can take it off a little bit it's up to you it's really like frost <laughs> so it's perfect solution for all these winter inspired products that's why I came with the name crushed ice so people will uh, imagine the projects which are covered in ice in different kinds of um, transparent but still nice and glazy textures so let's look 
maybe for a tiny bit of glitter for the inside. Let's no, <laughs> now I can't put it here. Ha <laughs> ha. Not funny at all. I have the glitter. We could try this as well because this is the um, going into the nice color palette. So, let's start with silver. Oh. Unfortunately, it looks gorgeous. <laughs> Just look at that. <laughs> I think I'll put a little bit more of that gel. Glitter everywhere. Wow. Now I have to clean off the glitter from the most important text, be in the moment, because we are all thinking about the festive moments. And of course the glitter is sticking nicely to our gel. This is the part of the plan that the gel is going to hold it in place as well. So we have our rustical win vintage winter inspired glazy bottle. But then on the other side, we still have a really nice clean look as well. So this is going to work nicely together. Now the last thing I need to do is to put the charms on it. Too much glitter on the text. Ta -da -da. I will take the photos tomorrow, of course, so you can see it better. But, uh, well, I have to tell you, that looks glamorous. And now, the charms. Close the glitter. Important. Close the glitter. Close the gel. Take the glitter off. Oh, I forgot about that part. Hmm. I will have to. I will have to <laughs> paint it in a moment. But first, the charms. Um, let's take a bit of the silver twine. It's white with silver. Perfect for us, I think. So we can add our clock, pocket watch, in fact, on the top. Hmm, I'm really tempted to put some of that paste around this as well. So it looks like the snow is getting inside and then in the middle is the most beautiful, precious crystal. Wahoo! trying to make it in the middle but that looks beautiful <laughs> okay I'm getting excited and then we have this and then we have this so let's cut the twine Come on, you can do it. Yay! <laughs> so
So now I have to dry the top of the bottle and add my charms. Have you got any questions, please? Because this is um, this kind of project that really, it's really fun to make because you can do uh, basically any color palette. We were inspired by the winter, you know, rustical look, but you can imagine doing similar composition and making that a steampunk bottle or anything else that you would enjoy. And it's just a matter of the color combination that you would like to do yourself. Because if you pick different colors of the waxes, um, the result is going to be um, completely different in the character. Maybe let's make a bow. Uh, I'm not master of making bows, I have to tell you. Don't kill me, I have no idea how to make bows. <laughs> well, I'm not really good at that at all. Come on, come on, come on. Ha! I did it. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is very easy to create. This is perfect project if you don't feel super advanced and you would like to make something for your home or as a, as a gift. Uh, but yet you feel that mm, maybe you are not a pro and you are afraid to make too many steps at one time. So this way we, you can go with one step drying, second step drying, and this way you will be able to um, make the whole process slowly, step by step. Let's put my charm. Uh, it, now it's going to be hard to see because I have to keep the bottle standing in the right position. You have to imagine. Now I'm adding the first charm. Then I'm adding the special pocket watch. I don't want to make it too far from the from the top because this way it will be taking too much of the attention. Trying to make it look more or less natural, but everything I do is turning out grungy anyway, sooner or later. So I'm just going to attach it and see what happens. This is too short. Now it is better. And finally, the the charm and I think I'm going to put it on the longest a longest piece of the brown twi twine No, I will take it shorter. See, I can't even make up my mind. Uh, 
have to tell you my cats are so tired today they are sleeping just changing the places because it's very exhausting to sleep in so many places in the house first you have to sleep in the kitchen then you have to move and go and sleep in other room so you go to the studio you sleep in the studio it's exhausting believe me then you have to change the position find a hiding spot for the next two hours so uh, your family will have to look for you and wonder if you run away yet or not and then to discover that you are hiding behind you're hiding behind the boxes because cats are like that So this was my life today, trying to find a hidden cut and the cut changing the position like 500 times, just going to sleep because my poor thing is so tired. I wish I was a cut in my next life, really. I hope. Maybe if I'm going to be good. I will be granted a cat's body in the afterlife. Yeah, it's a rough job being a cat. I know exactly what you mean. Oh, okay. Now it does look more or less what I expected. <laughs> so. We've got the charms, we've got the bow, we've got this natural grunginess. Now the last thing I forgot is this one. So again, I will have to put a bit of the uh, dark wax inside of it and finish with the white wax and a bit of the glaze. Oh, and the top, don't forget the top. Baby wipe. So have you got any questions? About the process. <laughs> Creative process was, uh, I think, quite fun. And... Uh, I think with the waxes, you can see the effects we wanted to get are quite easy. So it's not a big, um, a big problem to create nice looking home decor winter inspired project, especially if you are planning to uh, make it a little bit into a glamorous look. Of course, if you have the problems that the uh, paint will be chipping off let it dry till the next day and then repeat the application of the wax it's going to help to co the cove to cover everything as well because usually things like that happen if your paint was not dried completely or your wax was not dried completely and um, in some parts this is going to be uh, happening but it is very easy to fix especially when the wax is uh, completely dry. Um, so let's put... Uh, this is, I just want to clean the edge. So it is going to be a little bit more neat. So I can try to put some kind of liquid inside as well carefully in the future of course i would not recommend to use it really for uh, anything except decoration now but it's really up to you you can try but you have to be careful let me show you that again from the <laughs> front i will try to sit here in front of the camera um here 
Hi guys again. Hopefully you can see, maybe here. So this is uh, the final result. We um, altered the, the counter bottle and it has a bit of the golden tones in it, the golden brown for the rustic look. We've got these greys, this uh, cream chiffon uh, ribbon is going perfectly with the brown touches. And of course, we have this lovely winter bling. This is something that I'm sure everybody can try. This is um, not too much of the uh, product and we really do simple steps. Painting with white, of course, starting with gesso, then adding the waxes for the shadows and highlighting with white, adding a little bit of the color from the paints, then working maybe on the bling if you are up for it. If not, you can keep it matte. So this way you can get a lot of different results. This is more like winter inspired project, of course. Uh, but if you think um, about making that in different color palette, you're going to go through the same stages of work. Uh, just so is like a must, must have uh, as a start. Otherwise the bottle will never accept all the mediums we are putting on the top. And be prepared, some chips off will be happening. So some retouching from time to time uh, is going to be natural during that because even your nail by accident may scratch it off when this is still wet. And uh, of course, color palette uh, may be completely different. It may be very shabby, it may be very uh, grungy. Uh, this is a simple set of ideas and I hope maybe this kind of uh, decoration will be nice for your uh, first, uh, festive decoration for your Christmas time, for your holidays, for your New Year decoration, whatever you'd like to do set of ideas you can use it or anything else as well it will work really nicely on the metal frames on the boxes so um, i hope that was something nice to watch if um, if you're looking for more information about the product we are posting a uh, new inspirations and the new product release including the crushed ice on my website now so uh, finavar.com and of course don't forget to follow me on my instagram and on my um youtube yes youtube <laughs> sorry i am not in my best shape today so on my youtube channel of course you can see a lot of tutorials including um this video when i was altering the teapot using similar set of the waxes as well so you can compare some of the results and uh, the youtube channel is called finavar studio and finavar and finavar studio on instagram are my two accounts one is brand account and one is my personal uh patreon yes vasilis is reminding me if you like taking online classes and you would like to learn more about uh, products and to be part of the nice online community you can uh, sign up for my patreon and that means you're going to be part of the lovely art tribe and you're going to get exclusive uh, online classes and videos minimum two times per month and these are all always either projects or uh, very detailed information about mixed media uh, basics uh, about products about composition so if you would like to know more you can ask some of my patrons who are here today and they are my great support and i want to thank them from the bottom of my heart uh, that they are giving me so much love especially i'm not not too well today and uh, they are my supporters and with the uh, subscription they help me create for everybody as well so if you'd like to support me as an artist patreon is the way and you can start with two classes per month for 10 euro per month so this is like netflix subscription and you get so much of the inspiration so this is um this is it uh this is the bottle i will take the photos the close-up photos tomorrow so you can see better uh quality of the 
<laughs> of the details and um yeah i'm spoiling the patrons yes i'm trying i'm going to, soon i'm going to do the giveaway again for the special patrons so mm -mm. so they're giveaways as well and they are some special gifts and some other things like, mm. you just have to read it all there are a few options to pick from and i highly recommend if you're looking for online classes in mixed media that is the place so I had such a great time with you. I was only focused on creating. That made a beautiful evening for me. And um, I want to thank you so much. And please remember, my team, my uh, Ambrad Ambassadors are showing up here almost every day now. So every day you can learn something new. Just, uh, I think, three, uh, two, three hours before my stream, there was lovely An um, Anastasia who is my design team member. She was altering the candlestick. And uh, tomorrow there will be also my brand ambassadors and my design team. Check every day because there are uh, wonderful live streams coming with a lot of ideas how to um, use the Finavar products in your project, how to uh, create cool looking effects on your um, home decor, on your art. And uh, just, you know, it's great entertainment as well. So thank you so much. Thank you to, for, to all of my design team members, my patrons and my brand ambassadors who supported me today. And uh, this is going to be recorded, of course, so you can watch the whole video later. And I will try to upload that to YouTube as well, just in case if you're going to lose it here on Facebook. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the day or the night. Bye. Oh, tomorrow is Katya. Yes, don't forget tomorrow my beautiful Katya is coming to do the project for you. Don't miss it. <laughs>